everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Come and eat. Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and let your soul go. This teaching I'm going to give is called the 19 Tips to Surviving Evil's Onslaught Against Us. 19 tips to surviving evil's onslaught against us. This is something I have given a great deal of thought to. And I would be happy to hear any other, uh, any thoughts that you might have on this. In fact, it just reminds me after the last teaching, I should have opened this up to discussion to hear any thoughts you might want to add. And we can do that at the end of this one before we take a break. Um, so keep that in mind. If there's anything that I missed on the previous list, and same thing on this list, if there's anything, I'd love to add some more if you have ideas. But this is something I've given a lot of thought to over the years. Because I want a religion that is practicable. I want a religious, I want to adhere to a religious system that I can Put to practice as basic and practical and pragmatic. I'm not just interested in having a religion that's just a head trip where I walk into this big building with statues and cathedrals and organs and stained glass and I get a little altered sense of consciousness and I walk out and I'm not transformed. I'm not interested in just going to conferences and getting a big buzz and a spiritual high and, and, and getting going like a big pep rally and then I walk out and I'm the same. You know, that's like getting a, getting a, 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 draw, a, getting a buzz from too much alcohol or getting, taking a drug and you get a high and then you go out and you got your miserable old life again. I'm not interested in that. That's like getting a, a, a spiritual drug fix. I want a religion that I can practice and walk out and it's practical. I don't want all this head stuff. I want to know how to do it. How do I walk it out? Too many of the sermons given across the country, they, this is this big head trip. I want to know how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I take it, my religion outside the doors of the church and practice it? So that's what I'm trying to give you tips to help you in this. Now, as I say here on my paper, and again, for those of you who are watching by YouTube, you can go to hoshanarabah.org, H-O-S-H-A-N-A-R-A-B-B-A-H-A-H.org, and click on the blog. The menu bar at the top is says blog, and I posted these on my blog. And you can, uh, if you don't see it immediately, you can go into the search engine on, on the blog site itself, and type in, once again, I'm not sure what I used for uh, search words, evil, maybe. Persecution was one of them. Tribulation, persecution, trials, persecution, that was one of them. And you will find the, the article I did with this list of 19 tips of, uh, of surviving evil's onslaught against us. Let me read what I have here. In these increasingly dark and evil days in which we are now living, where evil is made to appear to be good, down is up and black is white, and where Yovah's people are being increasingly marginalized, persecuted, and even killed, what should, be, what should we be doing in the face of evil's onslaught against us? The following list provides the answers, the answers uh, from Scripture. So, just to have you know, I'm not a pacifist in that I just believe in rolling over or laying down, letting, letting evil steamroll over the top of me. I'm a fighter. Now, there's, there's a way to fight. We want to fight in a godly, spiritual way. Our battle is a spiritual battle. It's not against people, but people may be involved. But it's not the people really we're fighting. It's the evil spirits behind them. The weapons of our warfare, well, we'll read that in a minute. I think I have it here at the end. Yes, I do. Number one, what can we do to survive evil's onslaught? Let me just say this. How many of you, as you read the news, 
or watch it or whatever, however you get it. It's just everything is coming at you like a freight train, like a tornado, like a, a tidal wave of evil. People's heads being beheaded, people blowing each other up, people killing each other, people raping each other, Christians being tortured, persecuted, crucified, beheaded. Bible believers, like everything is against Bible believers. The courts, the laws, the educational system, the media, the, the entertainment, everything you go. Judges, people, things that we used to take for granted, freedom of speech. <coughs> Me, the, the right as a business owner to choose who I want to do business with and who I don't want to do business with. That's all being stripped away. And it's all against Christians and Bible believers and, and Torah obedient and Jewish people too. Let's not forget our Christian, our Jewish brothers and sisters. Number one, again, this is not in any order of priority. I just wrote it down in the order of the kingdom. Watch and pray. Yeshua told us to watch and pray. We need to be watchmen and we need to be praying. We need to be, this prayer is huge. That's maybe the, one of the biggest things we can do. Number two, there may come a time when this one will come into play. Pray that you might be counted worthy to escape Yovah's judgments that will be coming on the earth because of wickedness. It's not wrong to pray. Lord, I may be, Yah, may, I may be worthy to escape. Where we escape to, I don't know. He'll have to show that. But sometimes you, you may need to get out of Dodge. The, 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 the early believers had to get out of Jerusalem before the Romans took it over and they fled to Pella. That's a matter of historical evidence and they follow what Yeshua said to do. I'm saying, do what he says. Some may need to stay, some may need to go. It may get that bad. Number three, endure to the end. It's not going to be easy. We've had it easy. Okay, the chairs in this building may not be the most comfortable, though we bless our, uh, the folks here that own the building that they got these new cushy chairs that are much more padded and a little wider, and they're really comfortable. But, you know, this building doesn't have air conditioning, and some people stay home because of it. Look, if we can't handle a building that doesn't have air conditioning, uh, and to come to Shabbat service, how are we going to handle... Um, Persecution. How are we going to handle if we have to pray for each meal? This is what our brothers and sisters are going through in other parts of the country. We've had it good here in the United States. We haven't resisted the blood, most of us. I haven't. I've been spit on. I've been maced on the streets of Portland. But I got over it. I got through it. I say mace. It actually was paper, pepper spray. Yeah, preaching the gospel. I've been spit on a few times. Yeah, Bob's smiling. He knows what that's all about more than I do. I didn't get it in his face. I got it right here. Thank God it wasn't in my face. But anyway, but it did burn like crazy. And what the funny thing was is I was wearing a t-shirt at the time that says, Jesus saves from hell, repent or perish. It had flames on the t-shirt. <laughs> I used to wear that when I went preaching on the streets. And I got pepper spray so I got a little um, the, but the guy that sprayed me now this is funny I know this is on the site the guy that sprayed me was against the gospel and he had pepper spray he had a can of pepper spray in his pants pocket like this and I was just preaching at him I was just standing there preaching the gospel to him and he had his finger on the pepper spray I used to preach to this guy all the time because he was a street musician he was he wasn't a Christian, I don't know if he was a Muslim or what, but he played the guitar or something on the streets in downtown Portland. And his finger slipped and he sprayed the pepper spray through his pants. This is no joke. And it, it came out of his pants and it hit me, but it got him a lot worse in his pants. It was so bad, he had to go to the hospital. He got it all over down here. He sprayed himself in the groin. He actually got my phone number and called me up and repented. Wow. He was, he was, he said, I should never have done it. I slipped. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. And I blessed him and I forgave him. And we became, you know, we became, not say friends, but we were, you know, it was okay after that between us. 
So I got, he got a taste of his own medicine. And he had to go, it was burning, his skin was coming off. Uh, you know, he, he, he had to go to the hospital and it, it was like that for several days. Anyway, that's a funny, it's one of my street stories. I should write a book someday about my street stories. That was one of them. Yah is good and merciful. I praise him that I didn't get the full blast of it. It was bad enough through the pants. You know, I can't imagine what it would be like straight on at the bare skin. It was through the pants and through my t-shirt. Okay, where were we? So endure to the end. Guys, we haven't endured anything yet, most of us. And, and, and we just, we get, we get, I can't tell you how many people have come to this congregation. Your services are too long. You don't have a kids program. The seats are too hard. It's too hot. To this, just crying, whining, complaining children of Israel. And we never see them again. God bless you guys. We got to endure. This is nothing. Go out there and work in the heat. Where I've been all week. For, where it's 90 to 100, almost 100 degrees. Every day in the full sun. This is cool. Okay. Get off. Get off your horse. Number four. Keep your eyes on Yeshua the Lamb. And follow Him wherever He goes. Revelation 14, 4. When we keep our eyes on Yeshua, like that song says, everything else grows dim. We can, it's what we focus on. We can focus on, woe is me, I'm being persecuted, they're suing me, they want to take my house, they want to kill me, they this and that. And that's tough. Because of my faith, because of what I said, because I'm preaching the gospel, whatever. But if we keep our eyes on Yeshua, He will lead us through it. And if, we, and if we end up losing something along the way, He'll give us something better in return. If we lose our house, we lose our material goods or possessions or whatever, there's a blessing in it. Here and eventually. He says, I don't expect you to lose anything that you will not get a lot more in return. And if you lose your own life in the process, guess what? You get eternal life. That's a great trade-off. If you become a martyr, you get eternal life. If you get a, become a martyr for Yeshua. Hallelujah. We need to think about these things ahead of time. Work out the scenarios and resolve ahead of time to be strong and get these ideas in our mind so that when we do get hit with things, we will be forewarned as forearmed. Number five, occupy until Yeshua comes. Luke 19, 13. Be busy doing what Yeshua has called you to do. When you are so busy doing what He has called you to do, whatever your ministry is, you don't have time to be thinking about this other stuff. I know I've been called to preach the gospel, among other things. And I will keep doing that. And I hope if I have a bullet, a gun to my head, I'll be preaching the gospel at them. I've preached the gospel in some pretty crazy places. I was preaching the gospel to a bunch of skinheads in downtown Portland. And the police came and pulled me out of there. I said, no. I had the anointing of Elohim all over me. I said, no. I don't want it. They asked me to leave. They said, you, you got to leave for your own sake. I said, look, it's fine. I know what I'm doing. No. And I said, no, I'm going to stay here. They literally pulled me out of there because the anointing was on me and these guys were transfixed. They were, they, he said, they want to kill you. I said, I don't care. They're not going to. The, the, I said, the, the glory and the love of Yeshua, Jesus is on me. They're not, they can't touch me. They pulled me out of there, took me, you know, just for my own protective custody. And, and, um, and I, they, I said, I said, um, and they said, well, we're going to ban you from this. This is Pioneer Square. You're going to ban me. From, you're going to ban you from Pioneer Square because, you know, not because I was causing a disturbance, but possibly. And I said, where's that in the rule book? And the officer pulled out. This, he said, well, it says here in public parks. Well, I said, where is it? And I ripped the book out of his hand. I said, show me. I said, you made that up. That's not in here. I gave it back to him. And I went back out and continued preaching. And they didn't touch me. You know, these, anyway. Uh, it's, you know, but the, the, the Yah is good. He'll, he'll take care of us. Uh, number six, well, how do we survive the, the tips of, 19 tips surviving evil's onslaught against us. Engage in intercessory prayer. Though at this time it may not do much good, 
since the Bible, this biblical prophecy has to be fulfilled as the end time events occur. This means that the things will be getting worse and worse until Yeshua returns and destroys Babylon, the great new world order. Yes, do intercessory prayer, but there comes a time when the prophecies of the Bible have to be fulfilled. The persecution, tribulation, the great tribulation, the wrath of God will take place. So you praying for these things not to take place when they are destined and foretold to take place prior to the return of Yeshua isn't going to do any good. So be praying for the right things. If you're praying against the will of Elohim, it's not going to happen. Now, that's not doesn't mean not to pray. But in that case, pray that you may be counted worthy to escape. Pray that you'll know what to do. Pray that you'll hear his voice so you'll know what to do, where to go, if he tells you to go here or go there or do this or do that. And we can certainly pray for those that are being persecuted. Although, although the book of Revelation says that the end time martyrs, some of them, the saints, will have their heads cut off. That's what's happening over in some of the Muslim countries right now. That's a fulfillment of prophecy. So some have to have their heads cut off. I just pray, y'all, that it'll be merciful and it'll happen quickly so they don't have to suffer. Like happened with Stephen. He, as he was, the stones were hitting him, he looked up and saw the glory of Elohim. And the glory of Elohim was on him. And he died going out in glory. I think Elohim was with him and, and gave him grace in those situations. We pray that they, those who have to go through those things will have grace. They will not suffer pain. And it'll be quick. Number seven, be an overcomer in every way possible. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Those who overcome spiritual will experience great rewards. We've got to view ourselves as overcomers. I can overcome this. I can overcome this. You've got to psych yourself up. You've got to brainwash yourself with the word of Elohim as an overcomer to overcome evil. Yeah, it looks like there's no way out. Yes, it looks like I'm stuck in a box, in, a box canyon and there's no way out. But he can open up a door and he will give us the ability to overcome because he is Elohim and he's over all this stuff. On occasion, be prepared to engage in civil disobedience as a last resort if necessary. If the civil laws violate Yehovah's laws, the Bible tells us to obey Yehovah's laws over men's laws. There comes a time and a place for civil disobedience as a last resort. I don't have time to go into that. There's steps you got to take before you come to that point. And that's a whole other discussion. Francis Schaeffer talks about that in his book, A Christian Manifesto, and he talks about the steps you go through. They're very good steps. There's like three steps you go through. As a last resort, civil disobedience. And if you need to, you become a martyr. Or you may go to prison. Paul did that. Others did as well. And we, we, we have the scriptures here to show where the apostles teach this. Number nine, be prepared to help persecuted brothers and sisters in any way possible. You might be the next one to be persecuted. It might be you the next time. Number ten, continue to be salt and light to those around you in every possible way. Always be salt and light. Everywhere you go, everything you do, as much as possible. Even to those that are, that are persecuting you. Number 11, don't expect things on earth to get better. Yeshua never said it would get better, only darker before his return. He's coming at the midnight hour when the evil will be the most pervasive and rampant on the earth. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Go read the book of Revelation. Go read Matthew 24 and many other places. Ex Number 12, expect intense persecution of Bible believers. And I list a whole bunch of scriptures that talk about that. Yeshua in the book of Revelation prophesy this will occur in the end times. Number 13, be wise as serpents. It doesn't say be a serpent, it says be wise as serpents. We don't want to be like the devil, we just want to outsmart him. Find ingenious ways, now listen carefully, I've worded this very carefully. Find ingenious ways to circumvent Caesar's evil and unbiblical mandates without getting caught, while at the same time being obedient to Yehovah's higher laws. There are ways, often it's how we do things, how we say things, that can cause us to get into trouble. Whereas if we said it or did things differently, without violating the scriptures, we can, 
we can get uh, fly under the radar screen or circumvent the evil laws. I can give you examples. I'm not going to. That's another discussion. But the Holy the Ruach HaKodesh will give you wisdom what to do. Amen? That's why we got to be really close to Yehovah. So he will give us instructions. Children of Israel were the most unique, had the most unique fighting force on the earth. Look, our military and the militaries of the world are not very creative. Their forces are, whoever's got the most numbers, or let's say their tactics pretty much are, whoever's got the most number of troops and the most advanced weapons, that's who's going to win the battle. That's not how it works with Yehovah. Look at all the battles that the Israelites fought in the wilderness and during the times of the, of the kings. Look at all the unconventional ways that Yehovah used when they heard him and he said, told them how to fight. Whether well, it was with the jawbone of an ass, with shofars and lamps, whether well, it was marching around the wall and then shouting and blowing shofars. Whether well, it was going up on a top of a hill and raising your hands up like this or maybe like this, like a cross. Whether well, it was sending out praise and worshipers and warriors to sing the Levites with the Ark of the Covenant and the enemy turned on itself in some cases and fought and destroyed each other whether he sent them angels to smite the enemies or he, he sent them, they saw mirages of blood in the desert and they thought, I mean, all kinds of crazy things. You think Yehovah won't give us ways to fight? He opened the prison doors for, for Peter and James. Was it Peter and James? I think it was Peter, Peter and somebody, I don't know, John or John, I think it was James. But anyway, you know, there's all kinds of things. We've got to believe in these things. Believe that he will take care of us. And if we die, then we become a martyr and we've got a higher reward. Hallelujah. Number 14. Love not your lives unto death. Revelation 12, 11. Be willing to lose some, of, some or all of yourself for Yeshua, including your material possessions. Greater, greater rewards await for you for your faithful obedience to Yeshua. We've got to not be attached to physical things. And the physical things of the earth is tough. Especially in this nation where we've worked so hard for what we have. And most of us haven't lost everything. It's a lot easier when you don't have anything. Like you live in a third world country and you don't have anything. Because you're losing nothing. But for those of us that have homes and businesses and vehicles and and, and material possessions and we worked hard for them and we labor over them and we take care of them we have maybe investments or whatever um, it's it's tough to walk away but that's why we got to keep our eyes on Yeshua all the time and and keep our eyes on the kingdom seek first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you number six to, oh, number 15 be inspired by the great faith heroes of the Bible and of Christianity go read Hebrews 11 Go read Fox's Book of Martyrs. There's people that have done incredible great things in the name of Jesus, following what they, what they knew to, and believed to be true based on the Bible, and they've paid a great price. We have the Bible in our English language because of people that risked their lives and got martyred because they dared to translate it into the vernacular language out of Latin. And the Catholic Church killed them and persecuted them and caused them to have to flee and took everything away. Just the Bible. You, you, you tell me those people weren't men, of, men and women of God, of Elohim? We owe them a great debt of gratitude. And then there's also many that have preserved the Torah scrolls and so that we had the Old Testament, the Tanakh. And they, you know, we have a lot to be thankful for. 16, come out of Babylon more completely. Come out of her, my people. Revelation 18.4. Starting with the spiritual aspects of this evil and ungodly worldwide system. Eventually this m may mean leaving the cities and going into communal situations into the wilderness with other like-minded believers. Some of the Roman Catholic monasteries were started by those fleeing the corruption of Rome. They wanted to get away like John the Baptist did. 
or like the Qumran community there in the Dead Sea area, in the Jordan Valley, um, that area. They, they, they left the corruption of the cities and they found that the Benedictine monasteries were started because of that. Uh, because they just wanted to practice a religion themselves away from the cities and all that. There may come a time where we have to do that. I'm not saying live like monks. I'm saying follow that example and flee. Number 17, the more evil intensifies against you, the, love the light of Yehovah's truth. Love Yeshua more and run to and hold on to him, the rock of your salvation more tightly. So when things get rougher, that's when we need to go running to him and hang on to his word and run to his word and stand on our faith, stand on a rock and not be moved. That's when persecution comes and times get tough. This is the time to come to Shabbat services. This is the time to come to, to um, the feast. This is the time to pray for people, the time to run in to Bible study and prayer, to get together with groups of people and to be together and to be with Him. It's not the time to run off because you because you have, you know, you got you got your feathers ruffled or you're having some hard times. That's the time to run to Him. Yeah, you listen to the little lie of the devil, you listen to the your flesh, and you'll stay home and you'll go here and you'll do this and that. And next thing you know, you're on that proverbial slippery slope of Laodiceanism. And that's what happens. I've been walking in this walk long enough to most everybody around me has slipped sideways and gone downhill. And you have too. And you know what I'm talking about. You gotta keep the fire burning. You gotta keep keep the fuel on that fire. And you gotta keep doing it. And he's given us the Sabbath and the feast and his, the written word. He's given us all of these things. We have it in our iPods and our phones. We have his word all around us. We have no excuses. That's why we're videotaping this, because there's people out there that don't want to fall by the wayside, and they want to get these videotapes so they can be part of the community, even though it's over the Internet. What are you going to do if the Internet suddenly goes away? Huh? Don't think it's going to be here forever. One EMP bomb will take it out, or two or three. Take out the whole electrical grid, and there goes the Internet. What about if they control the Internet, and they don't let people like us that are quote unquote hate speakers because anybody that teaches the Bible is hate speech and they, they, they filter this off the air what are you going to do then? it's going to be back the way it was when I was growing up we had our Bibles and that was it and a few books and we got together and we had landline telephones that was it don't think that couldn't happen again I think, think it probably will so we're using the internet and these kind of things as long as we have, as much as we have, to get the word out there. And then people are going to have to stand on their own two feet. We might have to flee to a place where there is no internet. That's how it goes. Number 17, oh, number 18. Love your enemies. Do good to those who despitefully use you and pray for them. Finally, watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. And let the following scriptures admonish you. Ephesians 6, 11 through 18. Put on the whole armor of Elohim that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in, the, in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of Elohim that you may be able to Stand in the evil day. Um, having done all to stand, to stand, stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the, all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of Elohim, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And then, in conclusion, 2 Corinthians 10, 3-6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in Elohim for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Elohim, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Messiah, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Here are, these are the 19 tips that I came up with, and there's probably more, to surviving evil's onslaught against us. Amen. I hope this helps and blesses you and encourages you. Keep this sheet of paper around, put it in your Bible, whatever you need to do, and the other one too I gave you, and, and make that a part of your life, and I hope it helps and blesses you. Amen. All right, hallelujah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name. He is near, he is near, he is near. Yeshu Hashem Behim Atzov Oh